Hey guys, with the first season coming to an end, I decided this would be a good time for me to make a tier list. And before we get into it, I just wanted to say, don't forget to hit that sub button, because it really helps me out. I'm still on your channel trying to grow, so anything you can do really, really helps me out. I also want to say that these are my thoughts based on my experiences, so if you disagree, feel free to leave a comment and have a discussion with me. I'm not against having my mind changed. Let's dive into it. First off, we've got Venusaur now. Venusaur used to be a solid S tier. This Pokemon was terrorizing the game, but after just the slight nerfs to Giga Drain, I actually think Venusaur is pretty balanced in the A tier now. A very strong pick, but it's not breaking the game anymore. Next up, we have Gengar. Now, Gengar to me still sits down here in the D tier. I know a lot of you aren't going to be happy about that, but this Pokemon at high level just does not do what it's intended to do. The Little Bits of Life still did help it a little bit. I don't think it's the worst Pokemon in the game, but I just don't think Gengar has much of a place in the meta at the moment. Mr. Mime. Now, this one's hard. I don't know if I want to put Mime here or here. I think I'll put Mime in the A tier. Mime is a really solid pick. Really unbelievably strong, especially in the Trilane meta. And if you haven't tried it, I suggest you do because Mr. Mime is one of those slept on Pokemon that is incredibly powerful. Next up, we have Snorlax. Now, Snorlax, I think, sits right next to Mr. Mime. You can't go wrong with either of these two in your Trilane. They're both incredible for the tank role, even though Mime is a support. And Snorlax with block and, heavy um, block and Heavy Slam just provides so much crowd control for the team. The early game with Tackle is incredibly strong, and I think Snorlax is just probably the best tank in the game at the moment. Now we have Gardevoir. I'm going to put... If Gardevoir was just Gardevoir, I would put Gardevoir up here somewhere. I think Gardevoir is incredibly strong. But because Gardevoir is Rolts, <laughs> uh, it goes down here to me. I think Rolts is just way too weak. Getting Gardevoir online is just far too difficult, and I don't think it has much of a place in the game. I would love to see some early game buffs to Rolts, and Gardevoir would be quite a powerhouse if that happened. Next, we have Absol. Now, I actually think Absol sits up in the B tier now. Absol, to me, used to be one of the worst Pokemon in the game, but after the addition of Razor Claw and the buffs to Night Slash, I think Absol is fairly strong, especially in solo queue. Absol getting ahead is terrifying for your opponents, and it's just really, really strong in the early game, and it can really help carry your team. I I'm really liking Absol at the moment. Then we have Garchomp. <laughs> This hurts me because I love Garchomp. I, when I first started playing this game, I thought Garchomp was up here. I was like, Garchomp is one of the greatest Pokemon in the game, but the higher up I got in the ranks, the more I realized Garchomp just sits down here. Garchomp to me is just, it's just not enough. You get kited around too easily. You get slowed. You just can't get your passive up. It, it's just too difficult. And I know a lot of people are going to say you just don't know how to play it, but trust me, I have hundreds of games on Garchomp and it just doesn't excel at high levels of play. Then we have Lucario. Lucario has been nerfed uh, quite a bit, but I'm still putting it up in the S tier. I know a lot of people think it's fallen to the A tier, but I strongly, strongly think that Lucario is still an S tier Pokemon. It's incredibly frustrating to deal with. It's unbelievably powerful, and it's just such a strong pick. Uh, Crustle. I think Crustle sits in the B tier. I think Crustle can be really strong with either set. You've got the split push set, and you've got the tank set. I think they're both really good. Uh, Crustle's a very decent Pokemon. You, I, I just couldn't put it any higher because Crustle compared to Snorlax, there's just quite a gap there. But I think Crustle is definitely a really strong pick. Greninja. Um, I'm going to put Greninja in the A tier. Greninja has fallen from grace. Greninja was the greatest jungler in the game for a while. But the nerfs to the health and the damage really did hit Greninja. And it brought it down a tier. I still think an AD carry like this in the jungle is incredibly powerful. There are top teams running Greninja jungle and it's going incredibly well. I, I still think you can't go wrong with this pick. But there are better options in the jungle. Talonflame. I think Talonflame is also an A tier. Uh, Talonflame, to me, in solo queue, is up here. Talonflame in solo queue can dominate and can carry games. It's, it's incredible. But in competitive format, I think Talonflame sits right here in the A tier. A very strong pick, a really strong early game, really strong gank potential, and a lot of mobility to split push. The ultimate can push people off objectives. It's a very, very strong Pokemon, and I believe Talonflame is in a very good spot at the moment. Charizard. Now, Charizard, to me, sits here in the B tier. I think Charizard is a really solid pick. Uh, it's definitely the second strongest all-rounder compared to uh, Lucario. There, there's argument to put up here in the A tier. I think it's probably the top of B tier. I'm not only doing these in order, but there we go. Uh, I think Charizard is a very powerful pick. It bursts down the carries. It's actually a counter to the current meta, which, which is which makes uh, words, sorry, which is what makes Charizard incredibly strong. So I think Charizard uh, with Fire Blast and Flame Throws, Movement Speed, even Fire Punch and the Knock Up, it's just such a strong Pokemon. The Unite move is incredible. It will just completely take a carry out of the fight, and it's just really, really strong. Zero Aura, uh, the king of solo queue. <laughs> Zero Aura is the king of solo queue. You pick this into your solo queue matches, and you're really helping your team get a win. The Unite move is pretty much a free kill. Discharge is pretty much multiple free kills. The mobility of Volt Switch or Spark, either way, such a strong pick. I think Zero Aura is one of the strongest uh, speedsters in the game. 
I wouldn't mind seeing a slight nerf to Discharge, but I don't want this Pokemon to be useless. The healing is incredibly strong. I think maybe that could be hit a little bit, but Thera Aura is a very, very solid pick. Cinderace. Now, this to me is the strongest jungler in the game. I think Cinderace right now is the strongest jungle in, in the entire game. When you're coming out of, uh, when you're coming for the first gank with red buff on, it's very hard to deal with the Cinderace. You're slowed, you have to full heal the red buff. If you don't have it, you're in a lot of trouble, and it can really just snowball and just come online really quickly. It is the definition of a hyper carry, and it's a very, very strong pick. Eldegoss, to me, best support in the game. <laughs> I don't know if everyone agrees with this, but I think Eldegoss is an S tier support. It, op it uh, offers healing. Offers movement speed, the Unite move is incredible for stealing objectives and for healing your team and separating a fight. I think Autogoss is a really, really strong pick, really, really solid, and I think it's almost a must on every single team. Cremorant. How the mighty have fallen. I think Cremorant sits in the B tier. The nerf to the Unite move to me was not needed. I don't know why they nerfed that Cremorant's Unite move. I think Cremorant was in a fine place, uh, but now it just feels quite underwhelming. You Unite move in the center of a team and they just all get to half health and then you die. It's, it's not what it once was. It's still decent for zoning. The crowd control is still incredible. The dive air slash is, build is really fun. But I just think Cremorant sits in around the mid-tier at the moment. Then we have Blastoise. Um, the nerfs to Hydro Pump and uh, Surf really hurt Blastoise. But I think... Oh, not to Surf, sorry. Um, the Unite move. But I still think Blastoise hits up here. It still offers a lot of damage. The Unite move is still incredible in the late game. It can swing a fight incredibly fast. Surf is incredible crowd control. Hydro Pump is incredible crowd control. Blastoise is a force to be reckoned with. It's early game is not as strong as Snorlax, which is why I think Snorlax is still better, but... <clears throat> sorry. Blastoise is still a very, very strong pick, and you can't really go wrong with having it on your team. Maybe try it out in the top lane. Pikachu. This makes me so happy. So the, the buff to Thunder was not that large, but Pikachu was already good, and people were kind of sleeping on Thunder at the time, so I'm actually going to put Pikachu up in the A tier. I think Pikachu is the best mage-style character at the moment, other than Venusaur, of course. But in lane, Pikachu is just incredibly dom dominant, incredibly strong. It punishes you for getting out of position. And into the late game, Thunder has incredible scaling, and it just it does what a mage should do. It sits in the line, and it bursts you. It has incredible auto-attack range. Pikachu is a very strong pick. Clear was not in the game, <laughs> so I'm going to skip that. They never added that in. Pretty sad about it. Pretty sad. Uh, Ninetales. I think Ninetales has suffered from the same thing Cramorant has. It's been power crept by things like Pikachu and Venusaur. Uh, Ninetales has a very solid early game, very frustrating to deal with in the lane, very powerful, but scaling to the late game, Ninetales just doesn't do much of anything. You just kind of CC a little bit, give your team a little bit of tankiness, and um, you're playing more like a support than an attacker, and that attacker role needs to be doing damage, so I think you're better off using something like a Venusaur or a Pikachu in that kind of a role. Wigglytuff. Um, this one's hard. I think I'm going to put Wigglytuff in the B tier. I think Wigglytuff is an incredible support, Thing is unbelievable. Rollout is actually a really good set that people are sleeping on at the moment. Uh, the damage output is really good. The Unite move is incredible for a team fight. It almost wins you a fight. It's incredible. Um, but Wigglytuff, uh, after those slight nerfs, is just not as strong as it once was. It is not that solid S tier it used to be, but Wigglytuff is still very, very strong. You can't go wrong with running this in your tank slot. I wouldn't run it in your support slot because healers are very, very important at the moment. But Wigglytuff is a very solid pick and it's just a great Pokemon. Slowbro. Now, everyone seems to think Slowbro is the worst Pokemon in the game. And this confuses me because Slowbro has an unbelievable amount of crowd control and actually can offer a lot of damage. The Unite move is literally just a pick, uh, a free kill. A free kill for you. I'm going to put it right there in the B tier. I think Slowbro is a mid tier Pokemon with a lot of potential depending on counter matchups. If we had a draft mode, I think Slowbro would be one of the most picked in draft. It would be countering certain matchups. It completely counters Charizard ult, it counters Cramorant ult, it counters Blastoise ult. A very solid pick. It can grab a Cinder Racing at your team, a free kill on that carry. It's just a solid Pokemon, and I think people are sleeping on this one. Ah, uh, Marchamp. This is my favorite Pokemon, for people who don't know. I've loved Marchamp since Generation 1. I've loved it so much. I mained it in the game when it first started. I used to think it was about up here. I used to think Marchamp with submission out of the jungle was just so strong. But as the meta has shifted, I'm unfortunately going to have Marchamp down here. And this, this hurts me. This hurts me so much because I think Marchamp has a lot of potential. There's just too much burst in the current meta, and it shuts Marchamp down. Marchamp in the top lane is not terrible. It can do well, but Lucario exists, and that's kind of the problem there. And as a jungle, they're just better options. There are better options for Marchamp. I think it needs a little bit of love, and hopefully we can get that for it. Let's, uh, let's give Marchamp some love, guys. Let's do it. And next up, we have Blissey. Now, Blissey could sit right up here. It could be right next to Odogos on some team comps. It's a healer. It's incredibly strong, but I'm actually going to put it in the A tier. Just because I think Blissey is a lot more situational than Eldegoss. Eldegoss works on literally any team, but Blissey needs a team comp built around it. 
to be the pick over Eldegoss. Lissy is very strong with Helping Hand. If you're running a double AD carry team like a Cinderace and Greninja, then pick Lissy. It's going to shred objectives with Helping Hand. The healing is better than Eldegoss's, but it's only per one person. Safeguard is really useful in certain matchups. Again, if we had a draft mode, Blissey would probably be better in a lot of matchups. But I think Eldegoss is just the best all-round support at the moment. And we have Mamoswine. Um, I'm putting Mamoswine in the B tier as well. I think Mamoswine has potential to be in the A tier. It's just the clunkiness. The little bit of clunkiness that Mamoswine has where it takes a little while to get your Earthquake off. And after High Horse Power, you have to do that stomp. It just makes you feel very sluggish. And that can really hold you back in a, in a team fight where things are happening very fast. And as a tank, you need to peel back. And you can't peel back if you're taking too long to go forward. So I think Mamoswine could use a little bit of love on that clunkiness. But other than that, it's actually a really strong Pokemon. Ice Fang is incredibly strong. High Horse Power is good. Earthquake is good. Ascal Crash is good. It has the mechanic of slowing goals. The Unite is a little underwhelming. But Mamoswine is a pretty solid pick. And I'd say in a pretty good place at the moment. Sylveon. Um, I want to put Sylveon up here in the A tier as well. I think Sylveon is probably one of the best lane mages. Its potential is crazy. Once you level 4, things just completely change. Eevee is not the strongest, but once you level 4 and get Hyper Voice or Mystical Fire either way you go, you become the bully of that lane, and it's very hard to deal with. Uh, before the nerf, Sylveon was unbelievably broken, but Sylveon now I think is very solid. Uh, if played correctly, incredibly strong and very hard to deal with. And last but not least, we have Greedence. Now, Greedence is the best Pokemon in the game. As I'm not doing this in order, but you know what? Green's the best Pokemon in the game. It needs to be shown. This Pokemon is incredibly broken. Belcher's damage needs to be toned down. It's far too strong. This Pokemon has so much survivability. It has so much healing. It has so much speed. And it has so much damage. Now, when you unite with Greedent, you can burst down an objective in seconds. Or you can just take out the entire enemy team for free. I think it's just far too strong. I think I, need to, I, think I would like to see it be toned down. I'm not sure what they're going to do with that. They might be waiting for the end of the season to do something like that. But Greedent right now is essentially free wins. If you're not playing it... Pick it up and you will dominate in solo queue. So that's my tier list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.